Today we're showing you how we install this shower base as part of a kit we got at Costco. Stick with us. Hi and welcome to the Handyverse where we approach home ownership mindfully, turning to DIY as a first resort when our knowledge and skills allow it to improve our home and to hopefully inspire you to do the same in your own living space. Today we're installing a shower door and a shower base from Costco, the OV, OVE combination kit that's available at Costco and uh, it's not a project that I want to be doing but we discovered a leak downstairs and so uh, here we are, we need to get this fixed and we need to get it fixed quickly. So this is where we are now. I'm going to show you where it starts, down in the laundry room. Things have been progressing well down here. We uh, we got the walls painted. We got we are ready for baseboards. Uh, we got a sink that uh, I was going to use to start planning the uh, cabinets. And I got one coat of paint on the ceiling. And when I went to do the second coat, that's when I noticed this um, brown spot. And of course, when I uh, poked it with a finger, it was wet. So. All kinds of fun. If you see back over here, get some light in there. Uh, this does not look very good at all. Um, there you go. Uh, this is underneath the bathtub upstairs. It looks approximately in between the bathtub and the sink, which is where I think the leak might be. But let's go upstairs and start the investigation. So you can see in here, one of the things that I never liked was how close the bathtub was to the sink. You can't really get in there to clean. You can't see if there's any water going down. There's no door here. So all we have is the curtain. And I put a bead of caulking there to try and direct the water down and away from that corner, but that's not going to catch everything. So that is what I that is where I think the leak is. I think it's just water running down from the shower down in between here and getting down on the floor and then soaking through. But I took these knobs off already in the faucet. And you can see those don't look very good either. So I do want to rip this off and look in behind it and make sure there's not something else there that I, I don't know about. So the first thing I gotta do is rip off this tub surround. I'm not really sure how this comes off, but it looks like it is a three-piece. And so this middle section here, it's on top of the other two. So I'm going to start with that. I'm going to cut it along the top, run the knife along the sides and the bottom, and then just try and pull it off. And uh, luckily for me, we are planning to tile this afterwards. So I don't need to be too careful. If I happen to rip off some drywall, well, the drywall is coming off anyway. So that came off far easier than I expected it would, uh, but this is one of the reasons why I wanted to tear it all out. That is pretty disgusting. So replacing this was definitely the right decision. That's two down, uh, mask on now with all this, but uh, I shudder to think what this is going to look like behind here, given that wall looks like that. But we'll pull this off and see. So I've got that gross piece out. Um, doesn't look too bad in behind here either. I'm going to start taking the rest of this out, but it's time to cut, uh, cut a line here and across the ceiling to try and minimize the amount that I damage in pulling this stuff out. And I'm going to cut that out using an oscillating tool. These, I don't know how well they're going to stay because some of them are pretty loose even when I was just marking on them. So they might fall down on me without me doing anything else. We'll find out. 
In behind here, it doesn't look like there's any leaks, which is a good thing. I'm also questioning at this point how much longer I'm going to be able to leave that sink in. Uh, I'm trying to leave it in as long as possible so we still have a functional bathroom down here, but um, it may have to go sooner rather than later for me to get this tub out. I like this so far. So I didn't film taking the tub out because there wasn't really room to get my camera in there and do work at the same time. And besides, I didn't really know what I was doing. I didn't know how I was going to get it out. So what I ended up doing was, as you can see here, I used the um, reciprocating saw to make a cut on the side. I couldn't get all the way down. But then I took the sledgehammer to hammer it and distorted it enough so I could pull it out of the uh, area it was in. It was framed in, so I needed to get some space. And I did that by using the sledgehammer to distort it and then whacked it a few more times down here to get it up when I was lifting it up out of the... Uh, out of the area. Anyway, tub's out. Next step. Okay, so tub is out. Um, not too bad. Pretty clean all the way around. Underneath, you can see some old water stain there. But it looks like the problem is right here between the sink and the tub. You can see there's some old old rot there, but there's some new as well. And that's right above the spot where I saw the leak in the basement. So I think that problem is, well, not problem's not solved, but uh, <laughs> the, uh, the cause is certainly uh, pretty clear right now. Um, they put vapor barrier in here. They didn't do a very good job. They, there was no sealant on any of it. It really just made things worse. So I've got mold in behind there now. I need to deal with that somehow. Obviously you need to plug this hole that goes down <laughs> right through the laundry room. Um, Cause I need to pour some cement to put in the shower base anyway. So got a little bit of cleanup to do and then I'll make a base for this and start installing the new one. So the next step for me was supposed to be putting in a piece of plywood here, putting some concrete down and dropping the base and prepping that drain. Uh, however, the old tub, they notched out the studs and instead of cutting the floor to the right size, so the new shower base doesn't fit. So, uh, I'm going to cut back this floor another inch and a half. It's not even close. I have to take an inch and a half off this to make it fit. Which means I also got to move this sink now, uh, as opposed to being able to leave it in longer than I thought I would be able to. Um, anyway, uh, that's the way it goes, I guess. Time to do some more cutting. Actually, changed my mind. Going to start by taking this plastic down. It'll give me some time to get this cleaned and let it air out and dry and see what I need to replace. So get this, this garbage out of the way and then start to move forward. Okay, I've got the new vapor barrier in place, sealed all around, uh, removed as much of the old uh, boards as I could. There was some extra pieces in there. Got rid of those. I uh, got rid of that old insulation in there that had mold in it. Sprayed everything down, cleaned it up, and I've got a sheet of plywood in here for a base in the subfloor. And if you're wondering why uh, it's such a nice piece of plywood for subfloor, it was cheaper to do this as I need a plywood for another project than it would be to buy two separate pieces for that project and this. So I got nice subfloor in here. Problem with this is it is a little bit uh, wobbly. So I'm gonna have to shim that up, level it out, and I'll probably put a bead of uh, PL Premium underneath it. So when that hardens, it'll, it'll help support it and keep it uh, from moving. Now I just have to get the shower base in here and put it in as a dry fit. And with this in, first thing we need to do is mark the drain. Uh, but also, one thing to note here, I put a level on it and um, let's just see, grab the level. Um, it is sloping the right way, but I want to level it a little bit because there is a slope on the pan here regardless. 
Um, but more importantly, on this way, let's see if you can see it there, it needs to come up on the outer edge. And that's where the concrete will come in, putting it underneath. So I know that I need to keep it heavier on the outer edge of the tub so I can get that lean inside. And that's the most important one because any water we want to come back into the tub, not out onto the floor. That was the problem I had in the first place. Something else to note with the dry fit, I don't have these pieces on yet. These are the, uh, the I don't know what you call them, the guards that go around the edge of the tub to keep water in. And so that's going to add about, I don't know, an eighth of an inch to the tub. And if I come out here, you can see I'm pretty tight here on the floor already. I don't have that eighth of an inch, so I'm going to have to cut this back a little bit more, unfortunately. But it doesn't change the spot of the drain. I'm going to mark that, and I can start to install the plumbing. Next thing I have to do is put this drain in, fit it flush with this uh, subfloor. I'm going to start by drilling a four inch hole and then I'm going to have to do some cutting to uh, make sure this sits flush because there's not a lot of room between the bottom of the shower base and uh, the subfloor for this to fit. So this is pretty much going to have to sit flush. So now the tricky part, I have to get the plumbing lined up. Um, I put the drain in and I stapled this piece of cardboard on from the bottom. I managed to crawl in there and get it. Uh, so when this is level, my drain needs to be about half an inch below this, um, where I need to connect into. And I can fold this up out of the way to get at this plumbing. Uh, I'm not gonna be able to record this and do this at the same time. There's just not enough space. So we will see you here after I get the plumbing rerouted. I pop down into the shop for this part. It is uh, putting on the flanges around the edge of the tub and you need to put it on the back and the two sides depending on where the opening is. My opening is on that side, drain there. So you're supposed to start with the back. Um, that's this long piece and what I've done is I've, since there's no alignment spots here, I've uh, tacked this piece on just, just put one screw in it to hold it in place to give me something to butt up against uh, when I'm putting this on so I know where it fits after I put the silicone on and go to screw it in place. So that's what I'm going to do now. I need to run a bit of silicone bead underneath here on this lip and you, you put that on the side with the screw holes and that goes down. So I'm going to run that bead of silicone, flip it over, put it on here and screw it in place. So I've got all three of those on now, and if you're curious about what it looks like underneath, which I was, because uh, I needed to know what it was going to sit on, this is what it looks like underneath. And so when we lay down an inch of cement, it's the standoffs that make contact with it to help you level it out. That's the next step. Put in some cement, about an inch to an inch and a half, and fit this in on top of it. I did put the base in for another test fit before I went ahead. Uh, with the flanges on, it moved things a little bit. You can see I had to hack out the drain area a little bit. It's not as fancy as it was when I did it first. I was probably trying to be a little bit too fancy there, but anyway. Um, I took the wobble out of this board. It turns out there was one of the um, one of the boards underneath uh, the floor had, it was high in a spot. So I just planed it and that took the wobble out. And with that, it's now level across the back and side. Um, but as expected, this corner is down quite a bit now, and it's kind of to be expected. These are outside walls up above the foundation. So if it's going to lower anywhere, it's going to lower over here. I just need to put more of the concrete down in this corner when I do it. And I put a shim there too, to help with the slack. So I don't compress the concrete too much and have it too low. 
So, um, I also cut out some extra vapor barrier to put on top of the concrete so the concrete doesn't stick to the shower base itself. And now the next thing to do is to drive the concrete on here. And um, I need to leave that spot bare up there because I need to set the corner down of the base down there and slide it into place. And the other thing I'm gonna do is this drain assembly that I got doesn't have a, uh, a seal or a gasket around the top. So I'm gonna put some silicone around there just to have extra protection. Uh, I don't wanna rely just on the plumber's putty that's going to be uh, on the top with the drain in place. So I grossly underestimated the amount of concrete I needed. Um, I put it down, I got it level, there was enough concrete there to get it level, but I wasn't really, after letting it sit for a night, uh, I wasn't happy with it, so I ripped it out again, and uh, I'm going to leave this concrete here, but I did pick up more concrete, so I'm going to redo this and uh, do it down properly. I'm not going to bother videotaping this because it's going to look kind of the same, but um, Anyway, just so you know, if you're putting in the shower base, you need probably at least this much. I actually got another bag of this too, uh, just <laughs> just in case this isn't enough. Um, but I'll have enough this time for sure, so I'm going to redo that. Um, lesson learned. Hopefully that's a tip that helps you if you're doing it. I started mixing the other stuff. I realized right away that I had the wrong mix. I had some uh, stone in it, so I had to go back and get some sand mix, but I have a nice bed in there now relatively level, gonna put the plastic back on yeah. and put the shower base back in. Is that right, little buddy? Oh, yeah. Yeah, looks good. Okay, the shower base is finally in. Everything looks good. It's nice and solid now. It was worth it to rip that up and do the concrete again. Very happy I did. You can see down here at the bottom, it's flush at this side, but as you go down, there's a bit of a gap. That's okay. That's to be expected. The floor was lower over there. So I'll cover that with a piece of trim. And eventually, whenever we do the floor or somebody else does the floor, you put some leveling concrete on here, that'll, cut, that'll bring that up level and that'll be fine anyway. So that's all good. Um, next thing, uh, now that this is all in there, need to do the plumbing and tile and then move on to putting the shower door in. So if you want to follow that, hit subscribe. We'll see you in the next video.